Okay. My way of thinking at this point, I think, is the same as yours. I see 1 over something, and I don't see its derivative in the numerator. So log doesn't work. Okay, that's interesting. My next instinct is to think, well, maybe e to the x can be my substitution. Maybe that can be u. But for that, I need to have an additional factor of e to the x in the numerator. And I don't have it. Okay? But the nice thing about e to the x, and, well, there's nothing special about e to the x here. You can always achieve what you need simply by putting it in there and then making up for it. We've done it a bunch of times. We did plus 1 and minus 1. We did times 2 and times 1 half. We've done divided by square root of x and multiplied by square root of x. We've done all of those things, right? So here, my next idea would be to multiply the top and the bottom by e to the x. Now, I'll do this in my head and I'll ask myself, is it working? The nice thing about e to the x is that it can get absorbed into the d symbol. In other words, that's the substitution. And then what do I have on the bottom? u, u, 1 over u. Okay, not bad. But then I realize that if I actually go ahead and multiply this out, I get e to the x squared, right, e to the 2x, which is e to the x squared, and then plus 1. So that works. I instantly see arctan. Did you see the arctan already? No? Look, this is the derivative of e to the x. And if you imagine this multiplied out, this is e to the 2x, which is e to the x squared, and this is 1. So it's beginning to look like arc 10. So that intermediate step I'll write down just because some algebra was involved. And now I see 1 over 1 plus the square of something times the derivative of that something. And I'm golden. In fact, this is one of the integrals that we should just stop right here and write down the answer because we see it. Right? I don't find a need to do the formal substitution u equals e to the x. There's no need for that. We already see 1 over 1 plus something squared. So we have 1 over 1 plus something squared, which is e to the x, times the derivative of that something. So at this point, you should just go straight to the answer given all of the good work we've done until now. Moving on.